So we just got rain out of the bean fields yesterday. Shouldn't hold this out for very long, but overnight last night, the belts on our feeding auger for our dryer, they all burned off. Clean out auger, the belts on there burnt off too. So this belt and motor are what drive the auger in this shaft up into our dryer. And so down there, there's an auger that runs for the clean out of our grain bin. This whole thing is packed full of grain. It's a 12 inch auger, so that's gonna be interesting. Well, that wasn't the easiest cover to take off. I don't have the best spot to stand either. It's kinda high, but we'll get those belts replaced and should clear out the rest of this auger, but we'll see. This whole motor sits on this plate. And so you loosen those up to bring that plate down and gives you slack so that you can fit your new belts on, work them around these tracks, and then you tighten it back up and that's what tightens the belts and keeps tension and lets this motor drive this auger. And we'll do the same down there also. We had to fit it with a pipe wrench because it was so packed full to get it started. Now, it's all cleared out. It's all running. I think what happened was the breaker to this one stripped, so it just packed that incline auger full of corn because it had no way to meter it across. You want to know what really burns my belts? Finally made it back out to the fields. Now that we got those belts fixed, we're just gonna work at harvesting the rest of our beans and keep going until we either break down again or it's just too late to work. Right now I'm at the co-op and I'm unloading this load of beans that Brian just filled me up with. And the spot where they're having me unload is particularly slow. It takes about 20 minutes to unload a whole load, which, like I said, is slow, but just one step closer to being done with beans. So right now we're switching fields to a field that's about five miles down the road. It's all on gravel and instead of taking the head off I'm just gonna drive ahead of Brian and make sure the roads clear for him and we'll get over there and get going on that field there he is coming down the road so basically what I'm doing is I'm just gonna drive ahead and make sure no vehicles turn onto the road or just let Brian know to pull off into another field entrance and let the vehicle pass made it Last field of beans. So the beans in this field are running too wet for the co-op to take, 16%. And so we're gonna drop the bean head off and then take the combine home, refuel it, and then probably switch to corn and start working on some corn because we need to get going on that because of this nice surprise that we got. Some beautiful, beautiful snow. Now this snow shouldn't affect us all too much as long as it melts off in the next day but it is getting colder and the ground's getting harder so it'll be difficult for us to do our tillage after we get done with corn given that we still have plenty of corn to get out of the field so there's about 20 bushel in the hopper that are too wet so we're just gonna dump them try and dump them in the head because can't have them in there when we're switching the corn. I 
again. That's one of those things that you don't want to do, but since we don't have another place for them, we just had to do it. A neighbor of ours was running our Salford tillage tool and got to experience what we experience pretty much seems like every year. One of the wing wheels fell off. Now, I don't know what it is about this machine, but for some reason, the wheels every year, without a doubt, always fall off. And so, yeah, there's the wheel. Now, I don't know why it does it, but it's really annoying. And usually the bearings aren't very fun to replace and so you end up replacing the whole shaft with a bearing already on it. And that's not very fun to do either because it never wants to slide out. So right here is our shaft. And this is where the bearings run and tighten in with that hub. And that hub is what holds the wheel on. And those bearings tend to go bad and the wheel just falls off. And for some reason, these shafts, these shafts never want to slide out. So we always have to slice it with a grinder for it to come out, which doing that is a huge pain. Doing it in the snow is a huge pain that is cold. So here's our hub, the bad bearings, the bolts that hold the wheel on the hub and the bad internals of the hub. Love it. So we've got it pulled up next to the shaft now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the grinder and we're just gonna slice right along that slot so we can get that shaft out. I had to remove this tire because it was gonna be in the way. So we're gonna have to pound on the back side with the sledge. Now it is time for the fun part. All right, so I've sliced through this metal up to the end of the shaft. And now I'll pound it out with this punch and the sledge. So we got the old one off, put the new unit on, and got it all bolted up. I had to take this cap off and tighten the castle nut for those bearings in there because this swivel was loose even. And I don't know, there's just something about the bearings on this thing, it's just garbage. But we deal with it. And so we're gonna make sure these have grease, put the wheels back on, and hopefully run it some more tonight. There's the new hub and shaft and it's all good. Ready to go. That's quite a bit of snow. night after Brian ran that for a couple hours the tractor started acting funny so we called our repairman and he came out this morning and there is a shaft where the yoke is loose that goes from the engine to the transmission on that big cat is what we call it and it's a MT-865 Challenger but anyways We've got the cat guy coming out. He's gonna come, <laughs> cat guy. He's gonna come look at that machine, pull that shaft out, and 
get that fixed hopefully so we can do some more tillage before this ground really freezes even though that might be too late but you never know it might warm back up it's only the beginning of november so in the meantime we are going to go harvest some corn so right now i'm just fueling up the grain cart again and we're going to head over there and get working on that So we got to the field and within the first pass these belts on the combine burnt off. So we spent the last hour, Brian went and got new belts and now we're putting them on and we're going to go again. We got the belts on, the covers all on, we're going to start it up, test them out and if they work we're going to get to harvesting. Cat guy is here. So right now we are working on this big cat. We pulled the filters, the hydraulic filters in the back. They were right here, right above where this drip pan is. So we pulled those out. And now we gotta take the angle grinder and split them in half. And then check the interior of them for pieces of metal. Ever wonder what the inside of a filter looks like? There it is. So we opened up both those filters, looked at the oil, looked at all the pleats in the filters, and it was all clean, and that's a good thing. But now we have to take the hydraulic screens off in the back in that same area and check those. Suction screen removal. Shop back set up on the hydraulic oil fill. The suction will hold the fluid back and keep it from all spilling out because I didn't drain the hydraulic fluid on it and this is what our dealer told us to do. So we're gonna take that cover off like it showed in the book and see what happens and see what we can find. Well, unlike our filters, our screen's over here, full of metal, which is no bueno. Well, today we are going to take these filters and bag them up, those in a bucket because they're too big, and take them to Cat and have them check them out and let us know what we need to do to get this thing running again and in good condition. I'm sure it's not gonna be good, but we got snowed out of the fields last night. Got about an inch or so. And so this morning we are gonna do that. I'm getting ready. Time for a tasty drink. Tip it down, you don't have to suck it all the way to your mouth. Very fast. It's cold. those filters at cat and we forgot to take an oil sample with us so we came and pulled one and we're gonna run that back up there and then they're gonna take a deeper look at those and let us know what they think the problem is if it is worst case scenario it's not gonna be cheap but I guess we'll just have to wait and see <laughs> 